This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They offer a variety of PCB services ranging from standard PCB to rigid flex. Simply upload your Gerber files for a quick build time and amazing quality PCBs. In addition to PCBs, they also offer CNC, injection molding, and 3D printing services, which I'll definitely be using in the future. Definitely check out their website, and thank you so much PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. I've been wanting to do a more in-depth repair series where I kind of show you something that's broken and then show the process of fixing it instead of doing it all um, on the fly and then editing it together and giving you a final product where I have voiceover and all that stuff. I, I thought it'd be fun to kind of show the steps to troubleshooting and all that stuff and show you the repair from when I get it to when it leaves in a more uncut, raw kind of way. And uh, I'm not going to do it all the time, but I do want to do it more often because I think it's fun and it shows you guys uh, some of the stuff you've been asking questions on. Um, such as how to find broken traces and all that. So we're going to start with this copy of Pokemon Emerald. It was sent in by a viewer, and uh, I don't think it works at all. It's the first time powering it up. The screen looks awful on this guy. All those dots. I don't know what that is. I haven't used it in a while. Just kind of sitting in a drawer. But let's turn it on. And no game pack. So that means... This cart does not work, so let's go ahead and open it up. Got my Y bit here, or that is Phillips, we need Y. Okay, and I'm wearing gloves because I have a cut on my hand and I don't want to show that off. Normally I don't like wearing gloves for this kind of repair. I find it kind of cringy, I don't know why. It kind of freaks me out. Alright, so let's see if we can notice anything on this PCB that may be causing it not to work. So we have the original battery in, uh, so we're probably going to swap that out for the person. All of these pads look like they were freshly polished, so I doubt it's that. Um, but I do see some, some darkened vias, so that could be something. So if we look at, see how, how much can I zoom in here? Not bad. So I'm going to take my multimeter and put it on continuity mode. I'm just going to try to ring out a via that I see that might be bad. So meters on continuity. It beeps when it uh, when the probes touch, completing the circuit. Uh, so there does appear to be some water damage. Um, if you look right here, this via looks a little weird, but it's on this giant plane, so I doubt it's broken. This via too looks weird. But this via right here is what I'm thinking is corroded. Uh, it doesn't really show on camera all that well, but there's a dark ring on the inside of it, and that usually means that the via is no longer making connection uh, from one plane to the other. So let's see if I can follow it. If I sound stuffy, I apologize. I have like this weird sinus infection thing that I'm getting over. I always sound stuffy, so it looks like it is going to this via right here. Oh, we do have some continuity. Only when the probe is in a weird spot, so right now we don't have continuity. So that looks intermittent. So let's go ahead and see if we can fill that with solder and see if we can fix this just with that. Alright, so I'm just going to fill up this via with some flux. Kind of dump it in. And now I'm just going to fill that via, try to anyways, with uh, some solder and see if that restores connectivity. If it does and it fixes the issue, I will go through and uh, probably patch it with some 30 gauge wire to be a bit more secure. So where, where are we? So yeah, it's definitely darkened, so that could be it. If it doesn't take solder, that's also a sign that it will probably not work. But I did get a little bit in there. It did get a little bead in there, so let's go ahead and see if that actually fixed it. Zoom out. If not, there could be some more damage up top or on the bottom. It's almost never just one broken trace, but sometimes, sometimes it is. Alright, see if that did it. 
And what do you know, it was just that one bad via. That is so dumb. But that's all it takes, just one trace being broken will render an entire game uh, unplayable. So there we go. So let's go ahead and... Uh, so I've never seen that message before, due to corruption or damage. So the battery is definitely dead. Uh, all that fun stuff. So the data is gone, unfortunately. Um, all we are left with is that. So, let's see if I get back out of here. Okay, we already saw that. See, if this was an edited version, I won't be showing you this, because I don't play games that much, so I, I kind of don't know how to navigate all too well. I just want to see if it'll boot at all here. We got something. Alright, so that is good enough for me. That means the game is technically repaired. But I'm going to go ahead and fix that with some 30 gauge wire too. So the thing that sucks is that trace is underneath this chip. The via goes underneath this chip. So I might have to remove the chip to patch it to the other side. Or I could see where it rings out to. I'm not too sure what I want to do yet. Um, hmm. So I don't want to remove the chip to fix that one broken trace. I could. It'll take me no time at all. But I just don't want to. So instead I'm going to see where these two vias go and see if I could jump it from the other side by just ringing out to where it could go. So it leads to these two vias right here. I'm going to take a 30 gauge wire strand, feed it through. Uh, ideally it would stay through. Again, unedited, raw, real. This is what I deal with. Alright, so we have our strand going through right there. You can see it. I'll zoom in. And now I'm going to see where that rings out to on this side of the circuit board. My guess is it's going directly to that chip, and we should be able to jump it from there without removing the chip. Just bypass that dead via altogether. You might be wondering if I leave that via, will it cause corrosion? I don't think so. I think the damage is already done, but I will try to clean it out as best as I can. First, we're going to have to remove this battery because it is in the way. And it's dead, so it doesn't really matter if we keep it on anyways. I think I have some, some more we can throw on here. Let's go ahead. A lot of the damage I get are from removing these batteries. It's really not that difficult. All you do is just add some fresh solder, keep your iron on it, make sure the joint is nice and flowing, or uh, liquidous. That tab just came right off. Now we're just going to heat it up and pull it off. There we go, nice and dead battery. And now I will see if I can ring out from that via to the chip and then find out where I could possibly jump or it to to ensure a longer connection, a longer lasting connection. So I'm just going to take my meter probe, touch to it. And now I'm just going to take my other probe and kind of rake the chip. So we have connectivity on that side. It looks like only on that side, so let's see if I can find out which pin. Alright, so it's that pin right there. So we could run a jumper wire from here to here and then slap a new battery on. Okay, so I'm going to jump from this via to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 right here. I'm going to use 30 gauge wire for this. So I'm just going to strip a little piece of it off, probably more than I need to, just like that. Now I'm going to shove it inside I'm going to strip a little more off, actually. It's not quite enough. I want to strip off just enough to get it in the via and also fold it over so it doesn't go anywhere. So that should do it. So I'm going to put it in place of this wire that I used to mark the via. Pull that out. Feed this one through. Fits perfectly inside the via, which is nice. You can use thinner wire if you have it, but 30 gauge is all you really need for the top PCB. If you want to run traces on the bottom of the PCB, you will have to go a little thinner as it doesn't really like uh, thickness added to the back of it with the case. So now, 
going to take some liquid gold, splooge a little on. So for the most part, this is uncut. There will probably be a few cuts, but it will be unavoidable, I think. But I'm showing the process of the entire, entire repair. Now I'm just going to add some solder to that. Really just let it dwell, so that way I know I'm getting solder on both sides of that via. Looks really nice. I'm going to take my surgical blade and just trim off that excess right there. Flip it back over. And now we're going to route it to that pin that I counted out. Some of the insulation shrunk during the soldering process. I'm just going to heat it up and see if I can push it back down a bit. Just like that. Now it's not as exposed. Although it's a little charred now and that's bothering me. But that'll probably be fine. Ah, but it's bothering me too much. Alright, I gotta fix that. So I'm just gonna pull it back out now. Because that is just bothering me way too much. You see that charred insulation on that wire. Alright, take two. It is uncut, so you were seeing all the bits and bobs I would leave out of the normal process. So now that there's now that there's solder inside the V, I'm just going to go ahead and heat up the solder joint and push the wire all the way down until the insulation of the wire is flush with the PCB. This time, try to avoid burning the insulation. Not a big deal if you do. Uh, it's just going to look a little charred, which honestly is not that bad. But as you can see, we still have our nice solder joint on the back. I'm going to touch up anyways. Just a little bit. Boom. Get in the slot. And now I'm going to route this to this chip, pin 11. Now I like routing wires by using two sets of tweezers. Kind of gives you more control. So let me get this in frame here. So I like to take the path that either avoids components or follows a trace. On these tiny PCBs, it's kind of hard to uh, follow a trace unless you're like just repairing it. Well, a lot of them, but if you're just doing one, if you just do some nice bends, you should be fine. So we're going to pin 11. 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, right. Right there, I just put a little indent on that to mark pin 11, so I'm going to add a bend, let's say right about here. So I'm going to grab one end of the wire while holding the other. Just kind of bend it, nice 90 degrees. Now when routing wire like this, you want to avoid mounting holes. I know this right here is a slot that gets mounted uh, into the case, so I'm going to try to avoid that the best I can. And now I'm just going to try to bend it to line up to pin 11. Well, it's actually not pin 11 if you're counting it, uh, starting at pin 1 up here, um, but it's pin 11 from the bottom right. So now I'm just going to bend it again. And right there. Looks pretty perfect. I'm going to take my knife. And I'm going to cut just a little bit of it off. Now we have two options here. We could strip off the insulation with strippers or heat up the wire and have it recede from the um, soldering iron. I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to strip it just a little bit, tin it, and that should give us enough exposed wire to solder to it. So I'm just going to strip a tiny amount. Like, and more than that obviously. There we go. Now I have a very small amount of wire exposed. Now I'm going to tin that and that you'll see the insulation peel back and that will actually expose more wire which is too much for this. I'm going to end up having to trim some. And now I'm going to solder it right on top of pin 11. Now this can be tricky if you're new to surface mount soldering but it's very easy to do especially if you have flux. 
I'm going to load up all these pins with flux. I'm going to touch up these ones anyways because I scraped them with my meter. And they kind of look... They just look scraped. I mean, they're still making, you know, they're still making connection, but I'm just going to go ahead and give them a quick reflow. Just to make them look a little nicer. So now we're going to pin 11. I keep missing, miscounting pin 11. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Which I guess isn't a bad thing. So you don't want to solder to a wrong pin and possibly fry the chip, which I have seen. So a lot of this is just counting with Solder King. But you really don't want to solder to the wrong pin. You could take out the entire chip if you're if you're really unlucky. Sometimes it's not as bad, but I have seen it happen. And again, after I solder it, I will double check. Well, at this rate, probably like check for the tenth time to make sure the wire is going to the right spot. Now this is just to ensure a long-term fix. That filling that via with solder probably probably was enough, but it might not have been. So I just want to ensure a long-term fix here with this actual wire. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of it. If you watched the one repair video where I sanded both sides of the PCB and flooded every via with solder, I ran into a few issues with that. Um, that's because I was relying solely on the solder to make the connection, which sometimes works, uh, but with vias, you don't, you can't see in between them. You really want to make sure there's a mechanical connection, such as a wire, just to make sure you've got continuity on both sides of the PCB. That's why I like using the wire. Now I'm going to take my wire, lay it on top of pin 11, which should be right here. It fits nicely. Take my iron. There's a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron, not a whole lot, but that should be enough to join the two pieces, the pin and the wire. And now that it's secure, we can go back and straighten out our wire. We ha This is 30 gauge wire. Um, it's just solid, so if you bend it back and forth a lot, you will end up breaking it, so you want to make sure you're not doing that so that could lead to headaches later on so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of get my bend back a little bit just to make it neater Oops, my hand was in the way of that so I'm just getting my bend back to make the wire a little neater because their bodge wires can look nice I did want to point out that there is one more bad via on this but I'm not gonna fix it because it's not necessary so if we look at this pad right here, this is the positive pad for the battery, it leads to this via right underneath this wire. And you can see that it's a little darkened. If we flip it over, we could follow that darkened via right here to this hole so it's not going anywhere. And then it goes from here all the way to this test pad, which is not needed for gameplay or use in general, so I'm not going to worry about fixing that. Now I'm going to retrim that excess wire there. Get that off. Now there are some other spots of concern on this PCB, but I'm only going to fix what's needed as of right now. I don't think the corrosion is bad enough to continue eating through the PCB after a good cleaning, so I'm not going to worry about that. It seems like the only vias that look damaged outside of that one are just running through these test pads, which just aren't necessary for use, so I'm not going to worry about that. We do have this little exposed copper right here, which um, looks nice underneath that exposed, or it looks it looks nice underneath the corrosion. So I'm not going to worry about fixing that. It looks like someone tried filling all of these vias, which is always pointless for the most part because they don't do anything on the bottom of the PCB. Uh, it looks like someone did touch up some solder joints. Looks kind of nice, and uh, yeah, so that should be it. So now. I'm going to take a little, little brush here with some alcohol on it and just kind of clean everything up. You could use acetone as well for like the really stubborn flux, but isopropyl does wonders. It doesn't fix everything though, but it does fix a lot. Now when you're cleaning jumper wires, you want to clean with them obviously to avoid uh, pulling them out of their place. Just like that. And before we install the new battery, I am going to 
secure this wire a little bit better than how it is now. I like to use super glue, and this may get some hate, but I used to repair aviation equipment, and some of the stuff that the OEM called out for was actually super glue on circuit boards, so if it's good enough for airplanes, it's good enough for Game Boy. Uh, so I'm just going to do a very small dab of super glue. I like to put a drop of it on like an exposed lead, just like some scrap metal I have lying around. This way I can better control it, because you don't need a whole lot to uh, stake down a component or a wire. So I'm going to place the dab of super glue away from vias that are actually doing something so it doesn't fill in. Not that it will harm it if it does. And then I'm just going to put the wire in that path of super glue. Push it down. And that should give it enough strength. I'm, I'm also going to add a dab over here as well. I just pulled that up. It's stuck to my glove. There we go. Alright, so let's redo that. Again, this is live. Well, not live, but unedited. Which is kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. I like doing this. The reason why I stopped is because I got a lot of comments early on saying I talk too much. And honestly, I look back on my old videos, and I definitely do, and I kind of cringe at it. Uh, but you guys ask a lot of questions about the process of this, and I have a newer audience now since I started, so I figured it might be worth revisiting that method and see if we can get something out of it. So I'm just going to add a little dab right here as well. Just a little bit. And if you guys like these top, uh, these types of videos where I kind of shoot from the hip, let me know in the comments below. I still want to do them, so even if it's not well received, I probably will do them every now and again. Because uh, it's honestly pretty nice not have to edit and do voiceover all the time. Okay, so I got some super glue there. Going to straighten that out a bit. Alright, there we go. So let's install this new battery. So now we're going to clean up the old pads and add a new battery. You don't have to clean up the pads. Um, you could just solder on top of it, but I like giving everything fresh lead solder because lead free really sucks. So I'm just going to use some solder wick here. Take my iron. The iron doesn't have anything on the tip. Uh, you could put solder on the tip of the iron to help the transfer of heat when it comes to wicking, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to take that. Lay it on top of the joint. This is the ground pad and just kind of let the wick suck up the solder. You can see it flowing into the braid all nice and neat. And we have a clean pad. We're going to do that to the positive pad as well. Put it on top and let it just heat up. Now I see a lot of damage occur from solder wicking as well. You don't want to put too much pressure. You don't want to move it around a whole lot un until you're comfortable. I like moving my wick around when I have a lot of pads to clean up but I know what I know what to avoid when uh, moving and putting pressure so you just want to get comfortable with it and don't put a whole lot of pressure and move it around if you're new to it. So now we're going to install this new battery that I'm hoping is not dead. Now you'll notice that this new battery is not an exact replacement of the old one so if we line up the pads here uh, this is the ground pad or the negative terminal of the battery rather it lines up kinda but it doesn't make direct contact with the PCB. I'm not sure what I ordered. I ordered a lot of these from Amazon, and um, they said they fit, but I have never had one actually line up. They just have the same bends. So what I do is I force a bend in the tabs. We're just going to bend this one down. This is the flat one. We're just going to bend this tab down. This is the flat one. We're going to bend it down at like a, probably like a 45 degree angle. Move up a little bit, away from our previous bend, and been flat again so now we have a little bit of a step down lead and uh, that should make nice contact. I'm uh, going to do the same to the other terminal as it doesn't sit flush either. Now this isn't practical. Uh, I should order the right batteries but I have a lot of these ones because I ordered like a hundred and I want to use them before they die and I don't see any harm in doing this. So bend it again and a little bend again. And there we go. Now we have somewhat of a step-down terminal that should fit on these pads nicely. So when it comes to soldering new batteries on, I see this a lot too. People tend to 
kind of overfill it with solder and short out pins and whatnot. But it's actually really easy to do. And I will show you the way I do it. We take the clean pad, add some fresh solder to it. Just a little bit, you don't want to add a whole lot. You don't need a lot of solder. And we're going to take our battery, make sure the polarity is correct, because I see that wrong all the time too. Left is positive, so this is our negative terminal. Just going to slap that down there. Line it up the best we can. And now we're going to come over to the negative terminal. And just kind of add a bit more solder and see if we can climb that lead. And if not, I'm just going to kind of work it into position. That should hold it enough. And it does. And now we're going to focus on the positive terminal. So we, we still have flux on that pad. And now we're just going to tin the tip of the iron. I'm using a relatively small tip too. A uh, larger tip helps with heat transfer, but smaller tips get the job done as well. Take that as you will. Uh, we're just going to touch the pad. Now we're just going to feed a little bit of solder on. Touch the terminal and the pad. A little more solder. And there we go. Now ideally you want to see the lead through the solder joint, but with this lead bending that I had to do, it's kind of hard to do that and get a nice fillet, so I have to make a little bit of an accommodation there. And now I'm going to jump over to the negative tab and just touch that up again. Just a little bit more solder. And, um... I'm heating up the lead as well, just to make sure that the lead is getting solder as well as the pad. Hold it until it solidifies. And that should be all she wrote. So we have a nice fillet on the ground pad. Um, it looks weird because of the bend, but it is connected. I sent out a lot of them like that. We have the positive as well. And that should do it. So now I'm going to give it another clean to get all that flux off. I use no clean flux, but I clean it anyways because I hate the look of it. It just looks nasty. I'm going to flip it over and clean the two vias we got solder in. I accidentally filled the other one, but should be fine. So that, there we go. Clean up here. And I could conformal coat this, uh, but I'm not going to. I only conformal coat if there was a lot of corrosion or if there's a lot of wires that need to be staked down and not move anywhere. We just have one, and there's not a whole lot of corrosion, so I'm not going to worry about conformal coating it. I probably should, but the conformal coating I use is somewhat pricey, and I like to save it for the jobs that require it. So, that should be it. Let's get the case back here. Always lose the screws. So we're going to put the PCB... Nice and clean. Still got some streaks, but that'll dry when the alcohol evaporates. Put the PCB back inside the case. Put the top half on. Snap it in place. Drop the screw that I always lose back in. I want to plug this into my uh, DS, but the screen looks terrible on it, so I want to see if I can find my Game Boy Advance SP. I'm repairing an SP, and I have this battery slapped in just to charge it, so this isn't the battery that comes with my SP, but it is there and fully charged, so it should work, so I'm going to plug the game in, because this screen doesn't look like it was shot up, and let's see if it works. Turn the volume all the way up. Yep. Alright, see if it turns on, and if we don't get that battery dry error, or whatever it was. Alright, so it's booting, that's good. Save file, save file has been erased due to corruption or damage. 
new game did not see that um, dry battery error so that is good unfortunately all the save stuff is gone I'm not sure if that matters I don't know if this person bought this broken or if they intend on starting over but it does work Oh, God, there's so much stuff. Oh, da -da -da. S King. Sking? I've already messed that up. S King. Okay. King. Oh my god. Maybe this is why I never played Pokemon. I don't have patience for it. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, hopped out of the kidnapper's van with the Google Chrome logo on it. And more talking. Ah, my god, more talking. What I'm doing here is I just want to make sure the save file uh, remains after, I'm, uh, after turning off the Game Boy and unplugging the cart. Um, I'm going to assume I'm far enough to where it did save, so I'm going to turn off the Game Boy, unplug the cart, slap it back in, and see if my save file is there. If not, I probably just didn't wait long enough. I probably did not wait long enough. So I'm going to do this part off camera because, oh my god, so many words. So who would have thought you actually had to read the dialogue to find out that you had to actually hit save to save the game? I didn't do that. just kind of sped through it. Hopefully it would auto-save, but it didn't. Uh, but same PCB, same jumper wire. Just showing you now so I don't get any accusations hurled my way. I've had that happen before for some reason. People think this type of repair is fake. It is not. A uh, very weird thing to think is fake. Of all things you can think is fake. So let's open it up. Turn it on. And there is my new save file. Uh, my name is now two times. So I, had, I had to sit through that dialogue two times. Uh, which was just an eternity but it is right where I left off. So this game is working again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you like this style of format, and uh, maybe I'll do more. I probably will. Um, not too sure of a schedule for them, but it's just easier to get content out, and it's a lot more fun for me to just kind of sit down and fix something. Uh, thank you so much uh, to PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. They are helping me grow in more ways than I thought was possible, and I look forward to our relationship going forward. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time. Clamshell.